Good morning everyone and welcome to our communion service today. May each and every single one of us experience God today as we come to sit at his holy table. Ndianibulisa nonke ke gama lenkosi yetu u Jesu Christu. Ek groet julle elke in die naam van ons Here Jesus Christus. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This week we have one birthday coming up and it's a big birthday. Tomorrow on the 4th, it's Heather Nordea's birthday and she'll be turning 80. So Heather and everybody else celebrating a birthday, may you have an absolutely fantastic day. And may the here ahead be one that is blessed with blessing upon blessing as you experience God every single moment of every day. We start by listening and singing along with the hymn, Be Still in the Presence of the Lord. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. of the Lord, the Holy One is Elijah was fleeing away from Jezebel after he had the prophets of Baal killed. We read in 1 Kings 19 verse 11 and 12 how God revealed himself to Elijah. And this is our call to worship this morning. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. God appeared to this prophet, not in the noise of the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in a gentle whisper. Today, in many ways, God speaks to us in a whispering voice. So this morning, let's draw near to our God who whispers into our soul as we focus our attention on him and connect with him with silent and individual prayer. Let's pray.
Lord God, we come into your awesome and holy presence this morning to worship and praise you. We worship and praise you for all the times you whisper into our lives by revealing yourself to us in so many different ways, through rainbow promises, through million tiny miracles, by walking with us, talking to us, carrying us and remaining faithful to us at all times. We thank you for the week that we've had. We thank you for the loved ones in our lives. We thank you for the beautiful creation we get to enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, great and small. As we become aware of all the things you do for us and with us, we know that we don't always get it right. There are so many times we disappoint you in our actions and our thinking. Times we neglect to share your love, neglect to show your compassion, neglect to have understanding for those around us. Times we say and do the wrong thing hurting those around us. Times our own ego, pride, greed, selfishness is more important to us than your commands. Times we gossip, judge, lie, cheat. Times we know what your will is, but we do the opposite. Lord, we enter into your holy presence to come and repent to you our sins in silent and individual prayer. Hear our confessions. See our repentive hearts. If you find our confessions acceptable in your sight, Lord, forgive us. Take our sins far away from us, never to think of it again. Purify our hearts. Cleanse our beings. And wash us in the blood of Christ, as your waters of grace and mercy flow over us. Thank you, Lord, that we can stand firm on your promises of salvation and forgiveness when we truly come to repent. Thank you that you are always willing to listen to our confessions, have compassion for us, and forgive us. No words can truly reveal how grateful we are for your great love and faithfulness to us. This morning we come before you as your children. Be with us in our moments of weakness and temptation. Lift us up in the times of our despair and distress. Grant us peace when anxiety overwhelms us. Grant us hope in darkness and open our hearts, minds and souls to you this morning. Come and meet us. Come and enfold us. Come and whisper your truth and love into our ears and hearts. You know what we need today. You know how we long to connect with you. You know how much we want to experience your closeness. Grant us a discerning and understanding spirit to recognize, hear, and feel your presence this morning as we come to share at your holy table. Amen. We are now going to listen to a worship song, Be Still. Be still, be still and know that in stillness and quiet that I am the Lord And let go Let go of your worries Only one thing is needed Just be still and know And be still and know And 
scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, Luke 11, verse 1 to 13. I'll be reading from the NIV translation, and you are more than welcome to follow along with me. Luke 11, verse 1 to 13. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door's already locked. My children are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is a friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here ends our reading this morning. May the Lord bless to us the understanding of his holy word. This morning we start with a couple of questions, not a couple, a few. Can you remember the first prayer that you ever prayed? Can you remember who taught you how to pray? If you had to get up and pray in front of a whole group of people right now, would you be able to do it? If not, why not? Is it because we sometimes feel that other people pray better than us? Their words that they string together is more beautiful than the words that we can even just put together. Is it because we are shy? Is it because we're scared that people will laugh at us? If you look at the prayers that you pray to God, do they all look the same? Will you basically say the same thing just in different words? When was the last time you prayed the Lord's Prayer? Have you ever stopped to think about every single word in the Lord's Prayer and what it means? And seeing that we are busy with promises, how does the reading we read today about prayer come together with promises? This morning, we are going to look at the link between the promises and prayers through the lens of our reading from Luke. In this section in Luke, we find the Lord's Prayer. Now, the Lord's Prayer is also repeated in the Gospel of Matthew. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we actually find the traditional prayer that we recite together. But in Luke, we find more of a background and a reason why this prayer is taught to the disciples. So what is the content of the Lord's Prayer and what does it really mean to us? The Lord's Prayer starts with the word, Father. As we page through the Old Testament, we often see that God is referred to as the Father of Israel. As we page through the New Testament, we see that Jesus often calls God Father. In fact, he calls him Abba, which means Dad or Daddy. It's a term of endearment and love, a term that you use for somebody that you know intimately. Like you might have a little name that you have for your partner or for your mom or your dad or your grandfather or grandmother or your children. So we can also have a, t a term of endearment for God. 
Now Jesus makes it clear that we are all the children of God and for this reason we can all call God Abba. And so when we pray we begin by using our name for God because we are addressing him in a personal and an intimate space. But the next word of the Lord prayer is hallowed be thy name. Now, as we know, in the first century, a name was very, very important because your name determined what your characteristics will be. It determined what would happen in your life. It determined how other people saw and view you. Now, Jesus tells us that God's name should be hallowed. But what does that mean? It means that when we pray, we are inviting the time to come where God's holiness, God's greatness, God's power will be seen and recognized by everyone. So just in these first few words of the Lord's Prayer, we become aware that we have the privilege of having a special name for God, a personal name, a name of endearment and love, Abba. Because, dad, because God is our dad. He loves us. He cares about us. And we have an intimate relationship with them. But at the same time, when we are praying, we are also talking to God, the one who created, the one who's all powerful, the one who is sacred and holy, the Alpha and Omega. Our God should therefore be respected and revered. So when we pray, we enter a very personal, intimate space, while it's also very holy and divine. Jesus then tells the disciples to ask for their daily bread. In other words, ask God to provide for their basic needs. Have you ever stopped to think what your basic needs really are? Things that you cannot exist without. Food, shelter, clothing. To ask God for daily bread doesn't mean that we come to God with a whole long list of the things that we want as if God is Father Christmas or a personal genie. No, asking God for our daily bread is asking God to provide for our basic needs, the things we need to survive. The prayer in Luke then ends off by asking God to forgive our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us and to not lead us into temptation. When praying this part of the Lord's Prayer, we need to realize that there is a responsibility that comes from our side. We also need to forgive. We need to try and see past people's mistakes, past their brokenness, past their hurt, especially the hurt that they've probably caused us. When we pray, does this mean that God's grace and forgiveness depends on how well or not well we forgive? Not at all. But we need to understand that there is a relationship between us being forgiven and us forgiving. If we forgive others, we show them something of God's character. We show them grace and mercy in a world where grace and mercy isn't often found. By forgiving others, we are pointing them towards God. However, if our hurts are deep and our trauma is bad, forgiving is a process and we need to remember that. When we are hurt, we like to nurse a grudge, which grows and grows until it takes over our whole being. It's not good for us. And so Jesus urges us to let our hurt, feelings and grudges go before they consume us. Being unforgiving can so quickly poison our souls with anger, resentment, frustration and eventually hatred. But then it seems that our passage changes completely as it tells us a story about two neighbours. The one receives guests in the middle of the night and quite desperately goes to his neighbour to try and get bread because he's got nothing to feed his guests. Now, why include this arbitrary story into account where Jesus is teaching us to pray? Isn't this a little bit weird? 
So let's try and understand this account of the story of the two neighbors, because maybe it will help us to understand why it is included here. In the Middle East, the days are extremely hot. So people often travel at night because it's cooler and better for the animals, especially when they needed to walk from one place to another. Due to this, it often happened that people showed up at each other's doors unexpectedly because they didn't have cell phones like we do. They couldn't send a quick WhatsApp. And when this happened, one could be caught off guard if you had no bread in the house because part of the hospitality code in the ancient Near Eastern times is that when you received gifts, guests, you were responsible for all their, all their needs, including food. Three loaves of bread was considered enough for a meal. That was the norm. It was the standard. And so when the unexpected guest arrives, the man needs to find three loaves of bread quickly. So he goes to his neighbor, who's already in bed. The doors are locked, the children are in bed, and the neighbor probably just started to doze off. How does this person looking for bread know that his neighbor is going to help him? Because his neighbor is his friend. But more importantly, he knows that with the boldness he asks, with a continuous knocking at the door, his friend will eventually get out of bed and help him. Now, what does this have to do with prayer? Jesus tries to help his disciples understand that they should pray without stopping. Prayer is something that needs to happen continually and often. It needs to be second nature to those who follow Jesus. When was the last time you spoke to your partner? Probably this morning, right? And probably last night before you went to bed. Do you think a marriage will last and be strong if we only spoke to one another twice a year? Probably not. If we want a relationship with God, we need to speak to him often and continually. Jesus wants us to know that like that neighbor who's already in bed with the locked doors and the children in bed starting to doze off, just like he'll get up to help his friend, so God hears us when we call upon him and he will answer. In that we can trust and stand boldly. We only need to ask God for something once, but this doesn't mean that we ask and then not pray for weeks on end until we need something else again. Prayer is not something that is a once off. It's a daily ritual. Martin Luther, who started the Reformation, once said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Prayer is part of our lives. It's part of our being. It doesn't mean that it's always easy to pray because it's not. Sometimes we are angry with God. Sometimes we are disappointed. Sometimes we are just so hurt that we don't really have words. But that's okay. Because God can take it as long as we talk to him. Even in our anger and disappointment. Even if we just sit at his feet in silence because we don't have words to express what we are feeling. That's enough. Because it's about spending time with our Abba. And this is what brings us to the promise part of the series. Jesus wants us to know that when we cry out to God, when we knock on God's door, God hears us. He answers and he opens that door. Verse nine is filled with specific verbs that show us an action that happens over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. We need to continue asking, continue seeking, continue knocking, because God will continue hearing us, continue to answer the door, continue to reveal himself and continue to be there. God knows each one of us by name. He knows our burdens. He knows our problems. He knows our hurts. But even though he knows all of it, 
He still wants us to converse with him and tell him about our day, whether it was good or bad. He wants to know about the things that excite us, the things that bring us joy, the things that we are grateful for. He also wants to know what the things are that we need and want. He wants to hear our voices when we are worried or anxious or scared or when we are going through a bad patch. Because we, when we come to God in everything, God is with us in everything. He hears us, he sees us, he knows us, and he acts on our behalf. This is the promise that we find in this reading this morning. God is our Abba that will get up in the middle of the night to help us, to be there for us, and to comfort us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you that we can call upon you at any time, day or night. You hear us. You see us. You know us. You are faithful and loyal, filled with compassion and understanding, ready to guide and help us. Thank you that we can have an intimate relationship with you. Creator, sustainer, redeemer, or powerful and all-knowing God. Thank you that you look after our basic needs. You care about our daily bread. You forgive us time and time again. You feed us physically and spiritually. This morning, we come to sit at your table to be fed by you once again. As we approach your table, show us who the people are in our lives that we need to forgive. Grant us the courage, the strength, the compassion and the love to let go of our hurts. Come and wound up our brokenness and set us free from anger and resentment. As we approach your holy table, come and enfold us in your love and compassion, in your forgiveness, as we give ourselves over to you and your promises completely. Thank you for all the promises you've made to us. Thank you that we can hold on to these promises and know that they are true. Thank you that we can come into your presence at this very moment. Amen. We are now going to listen to the communion hymn. And during the course of this hymn, you are more than welcome to get your elements of bread and wine ready. So our communion hymn this morning is the Lord's Prayer.
gather here this morning around God's table. And anybody who's joining us or tuning in is more than welcome to join us in the communion. For this is God's table. Jesus said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He who comes to me I will never, ever send away. Beloved in the Lord, attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, as is given to us by St. Paul, who said, or who wrote, I've received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup. He drank from it and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, sh shed for the remission of sins. Drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes again. Therefore, that we may fulfill his institution in righteousness and in joy, let us follow his blessed example in word and action, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and wine, I now take these elements to be set apart for his holy use. Let's pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we, your unworthy children, praise and bless your holy name for the majesty of your glory and for the wonder of your works. With all your faithful people everywhere, in heaven and on earth, we praise and adore you, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Not as we ought, but as we are able, we thank you for his life, his perfect obedience even to death upon a cross, his glorious resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, where he is seated at your right hand, making intercession for us. We thank you for the promised gift of the Holy Spirit and pray that the Spirit may sanctify both us and these your gifts of bread and wine, which we now set apart to your sacred and holy use, that the bread which we break may be to us the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup of blessings which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, so that we through faith may be partakers of his body and his blood, with all its benefits to our spiritual nourishment and growth in grace. O God, as we now make memorial of him in the sacrament of his appointing, in fellowship with your church, in heaven and on earth, we offer to you ourselves a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. According to the holy institution, example and command of our Jesus Christ, and in remembrance of him, we do this. The same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup. After he had blessed it, he said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for the remission of sins. Drink of it in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, as you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Take, eat, the body of Christ is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of him. This cup is the new covenant of the blood of Christ shed for the remission of sins. Drink of it 
in remembrance of him. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, we bless you for your great goodness to us at your holy table. Give us grace that we may not be disobedient to your heavenly vision, but that we may serve you more faithfully day by day. We remember before you your whole church, asking that you will give your people everywhere more abundant faith and hope and love. Deepen our love for you. Increase our knowledge of your truth so that we can be quickened and guided by your Spirit, so that we can be cleansed from sin and saved to righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal God, we thank you for all whom you have taken to yourself, all prophets, martyrs, saints and holy ones of every age. Especially we remember those whom we love, who serve you now in your nearer presence. Keep us worthy of all those who have gone before us and who now live with you, and let the same mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus, that we may daily deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Grant us, O Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. We are now going to listen to the hymn, Abba Father. Abba Father. Babalo lenko si yetu, u Yesu Christu, u tando luka tiko, u butlelwana lo moyo u yentwele, ma lube nani nonke. En nou magi genore van God, die liefde van Christus, en die gemeenskap van die heilige gees met elke van jylle wees en blij. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Be not dismayed, what are it guide? God will take care of you. Beneath His wings of love abide, God will take care of you.
Dear.